<laughs> okay. 7.30. Um, formal written advance notice is required by NJSA 1041 has been provided at this meeting at least 48 hours in advance of today, giving the time, date, and location and to the extent known at the time the agenda of this meeting. Such notice stated that formal action may or may not be taken. The notice was posted on the bulletin board outside the office of the municipal clerk reserved for this and other similar announcements provided to the suburban trends the newspaper designated by the borough and council, borough council to receive such notices and filed with the borough clerk can we stand for a pledge please pledge allegiance to the flag of the united states of america and to the republic for which it stands one nation under god indivisible liberty and justice for all Okay. That open office here, but I don't know why we need we don't need that. We did that last month. But things get stuck yep. off. Yep. We did that already. Yeah. Agendas get copied and pasted. Okay. We have a roll call, please, Liz. Okay. Andrew Silverstein. Craig here. Tom Claywood. Here. Adam Nova. Here. Ken Ross. Here. Tim Zioka. <laughs> Not here. Not here. <laughs> James Kimberlin? Here. Councilman DeLine? Here. And with us is Ben DeLazy, Debbie Lawler, and Ann Brewer, and Mayor Sarah. We'll get there. Okay. Oh. Um, first order of business is um, approval of the um, reorganization meeting. We'll do the minutes, we'll do it each one separately. I have a motion to approve the minutes for the reorganization meeting. Motion. I have a motion, I have a second. 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 Ken. Any discussion? Um, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Anyone opposed? <clears throat> anyone? I wasn't there. Upset. Anyone voting present? Present. Present. As well. okay. I was getting there. Sorry. <laughs> okay. um, can we have a motion to approve the um, regular meeting of January 18th? Motion. Second. Same. Please. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Anyone opposed? Anyone voting present? Present. Okay. <laughs> and finally, um, can we have a motion to approve the executive session meeting of January 18th? Motion. Second. Same list. Um, any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Anyone opposed? Anyone voting present? Present. Aye. Happy. Okay. Okay, correspondence. Um, we have um, a resolution 2491, which was from um, Pompton Lakes um, Mayor and Council in regard to um, Ben's contract. And also, we also got um, a resolution from Bloomingdale um, in regards to, um, I guess, um, codifying um, square footage of apartments in their um, um, either redevelopment zone or in their zoning. I really couldn't tell, but basically they um, came up with um, square footage for efficiencies, one bedrooms, two bedrooms, and three bedrooms, which um, they are only um, going to allow as COA units. Um, and just for your information, um, they um, are 550 square feet for an efficiency, 650 for a one bedroom, 800 for a two bedroom, and 960 for a three bedroom. And that's all the correspondence that we have. Okay, Executive Director's Report. Where is Ben? Oh, there you are. <laughs> I'm here. Um, yes, uh, the 223 Wanakew, um, that's Plaza 5, right, Plaza 5. They, um, they did close on the deal, so we had authorized the, uh, the sale there. They closed uh, early in January. On um, the meeting, you are going to have a meeting with the building department that didn't happen because it was this past Tuesday with the snow, so they had to reschedule that. Um, I did speak with the developer, John, about the front facade there, um, and uh, I brought that to his attention. He was promised to bring that up with his um, contractor, so I haven't heard back from him yet, but I, you know, so that needs to be addressed. He did mention to me that they're contemplating uh, the side change of some materials, I guess away from stucco maybe into something else. I advised him or informed him. Any changes, he had to come back before the board. So 
just I don't he hadn't made any decisions yet he we were just talking about procedure for that um, but he is uh, planning on breaking ground in March okay. so, and he did send me a report uh, that's I this is a summary of a number of those things so he did send me that report that was uh, required with this agreement okay, okay. good um, senior housing sake senior housing uh, project we're having a presentation tonight I believe right on that yes so we'll get more of an update from from those folks then uh, same thing with Ponte Plaza you know presentation here so an update on that and then um, I am just coordinating work on coordinating a meeting regarding the Billy Smith project um, you know I did move back and forth with the attorney there so we'll get that um, scheduled soon to see what they're up to okay good any questions for Ben None. Okay. Um, so let's move on to um, a conceptual presentation. Again, I'll remind all those in the audience that this is a conceptual presentation. We're not approving anything tonight. This is not a formal application as of this point. So there is um, really just a discussion of ideas. And this is Compton Plaza, 199 to 222 Wanakew Avenue, Lot 3000, Lot 6, 7, 8, 9, and 10. Um, as you recall, and those of you in the audience that were here um, the last time uh, the folks from Pontham Plaza were here, um, they did propose a fairly aggressive, not aggressive, a fairly um, large project. Um, and um, I think they um, got the impression, um, or at least the feeling of the board, that um, we, we kind of liked the idea of the project. We thought, I mean, you couldn't not say it wasn't a beautiful project, but we did think it was on the large side. So um, there have been some discussions with them, and I believe they are going to come back and give us their latest ideas and iterations um, of this. Um, so gentlemen, um, you're on. Okay. Thank you very much, Mr. Chairman. Thank you for having us. Thank you for your feedback. We, we heard everyone loud and clear that the project was a bit bulky. <laughs> Uh, for the liking of the residents and businesses and, and taxpayers in Pompton Lakes. So we went back to the drawing board and we came up with a design that uh, reduces costs by about 25%. I'm not going to steal these gentlemen's thunder. It actually provides for a much larger or more significant reduction in size. Uh, just for the record, my name is Bob Benneke. I am the owner's rep, uh, managing member of Pompton Plaza. For the record, less than 10% of equity, and our compensation is dependent upon the success of a project here at Pompton Plaza. Rich Osika is the other managing member. You may remember him from uh, the December 7th meeting and the August 17th meeting. He is in Houston. Um, Chuck and Jeff from Stonefield are in Hudson County, my partner is in Garfield tonight. So we are sort of spread out all over the place. Uh, we do have a design architect that we've brought on board to supplement and go over our various iterations. I had a PowerPoint prepared. I'm not going to, to um, bore you with it um, because if I do, we may not get to the, to the heart of the matter uh, because the electronics are a little bit sensitive. So the public and the audience can see our new design. Uh, one last thing is we have done a um, revised school-aged children and population study. We've done a revised pilot calculation. And again, we're not asking for any RAB as, as Meridia did. We're not asking for that. We want to work with the town. We also want to work with the borough on all aspects of design as we know we have to under the statute but we want to go the extra step it's a beautiful project and i i think that and i know that you're going to be satisfied with the design hopefully uh, we can come to uh, some meetings of the mind so that we can get our teams together and really get into the guts of things so with that i'm going to ask vaskin to um, go through vaskin satrakian the sponsor and the owner to go through some of the steps that we've taken over the, the last couple few months to bring this project into a different design format. Uh, thank you, uh, Bob. Uh, 
Uh, ladies and gentlemen, basically uh, what we uh, concluded is that it's going to be a very tough battle to, to go through if we stick to the original design. And we heard loud and clear your concerns about height. Uh, I still feel that the DAB project could have been great for the, for the town. Uh, it would have been unique. Uh, and I, all I can say is that I wish uh, height had not become such a major issue. Uh, given that, uh, if you're going to reduce the height, uh, also I concluded that uh, from my standpoint, there is no way we can afford to tear down uh, 50 plus thousand square feet of uh, commercial that we currently have pretty much uh, in place and uh, if not fully rented, uh, but at least uh, uh, occupied. And, uh, and I started thinking that maybe uh, losing that 50,000 square feet of commercial would be a mistake and uh, we would, the town may not recover that uh, if ever because 50,000 square feet, no one is going to come and build today uh, in the current environment 50,000 square feet of commercial. So I said, what can we do if uh, we have, if we keep the buildings, maybe with the exception of the rooming house uh, in the middle, and uh, open up the vista through the open house, through the so that the uh, 50 foot uh, wide uh, rooming house spot into the back of the property and put the uh, mid rise in the back, which would be less bulky, smaller. So essentially, what happens if we downsize the project at the same time keep the existing commercial spaces intact? In and uh, I came up with this idea that we could also build a plaza, which would be street level, because I didn't want to give up on the plaza idea. You know, we're all in love with the plaza, and we thought that the plaza would be very beneficial for the town. So essentially what uh, Kevin, uh, the, our architect, uh, design architect, came up with is a solution which uh, sort of puts all these pieces together, saves the existing real estate. Uh, we put something in the back, in the parking lot, which would be smaller. So reducing uh, the total number of units from approximately 380 apartments down to 210, essentially almost half. Uh, obviously, we can only justify doing that if we keep the existing uh, commercial space. So then, uh, you know, as I went through the thought process, I decided that if with the plaza can also connect to the existing buildings, it could be a win-win because uh, we could have more uh, retail stores on the sides. Uh, whereas now it's just basically a wall and there's nothing there. So uh, the end result was something that I'm quite proud of and uh, I'm actually liking not as much maybe as the previous design, but uh, almost as much. I mean, I'm not going to hide the fact that I still like the previous design. But this one is a second, uh, it's quite close in terms of its attributes. So it, it does uh, two or three things which uh, are very beneficial to for the town. One is uh, the fact we're saving 50,000 square feet of commercial real estate, uh, which in the future could be very uh, could be a big plus for the town. We're also maintaining the plaza. It's a little bit smaller, but uh, the one nice thing about this concept is that you can see the plaza from the street. It's not hidden from view. I remember one gentleman from the audience have objected to that. And uh, thirdly, uh, uh, although we did not come down in height as much as we would have liked, we are creating an extra level of parking, which is going to provide an additional 75, approximately 75 parking spots for the public, uh, whereas before we did not have that excess capacity. So if you uh, decide that the building is still too high, we're going to lose one level of parking, and but hopefully you will you will see the benefits for the town to have all that extra parking in place. And last but not least, uh, Kevin came up with this uh, wonderful idea of creating like a stadium setting in the plaza where we have stands for the public, and so if we hold events, uh, public events, like uh, uh, music, anything that uh, happens in town, the public will be able to have uh, seating uh, in the plaza. On that uh, note, I'm going to pass the 
but on to Kevin, and he's going to take us through the process. Kevin? So, before we do that, the, the data points, Mr. Chairman, are 380 units yep. down to 210. And approximately a reduction of of around approximately 30 feet in height of the total building height. We're going to let Kevin go through uh, the height difference and the massing difference. In addition, the building, the new building, and this is key, is approximately 170 feet from the from the curb line. And that's so we're not, as Mr. Satrakian indicated, the existing buildings will stay there. There will be that plaza leading into the back building, but that's a full 170 feet set back down the hill so that the height difference, as you'll see from some of the schematics that Kevin has put together, is quite a dramatic reduction. In addition, that front building, uh, we've, we've reduced that height as well, so you'll see that also. Yes, it's yes, uh, Bob. Uh, I uh, should have mentioned that. In the previous uh, plan, uh, the front building was going to be recessed from the sidewalk by another nine feet. That was going to be fairly tall. We we're going to have 30 feet of uh, retail, on top of which there's going to be another 25 feet for uh, apartments. So the total would have been 55. Uh, if we maintain the existing buildings, so the height will be less. And as Bob pointed out, we're also pushing uh, the back building another 50 feet, making it smaller. As per Kevin's uh, comment, he said the, the angle of view, when you look at it from the street, the further away the building is in the back, the less uh, of an issue height becomes. So not only we reduce the height, but we also squished the building by another 50 feet. So obviously we lost a lot of uh, apartments, uh, but that's the end result of downsizing. So The geometry of the building Taking off what Mr. Satrakin just said, the geometry of the building now is purely unique to this property. There's no one else that can duplicate this geometry, this spatial um, figure as a building in Pompton Lakes. So this will be a unique redevelopment um, project in and of itself. It can be other nice projects, don't get me wrong, but in terms of what we're trying to create here with the plaza, et cetera, is unique to Pompton Plaza. That, that would only be true based on the ownership of the properties now. If someone came in and masked properties, they could do something similar. Maybe if you go to the left of our site, but there's a problem, and I won't get into it too much, but there's a problem with some of those ownerships in that one driveway, the curved driveway, as I call it, back towards the VFW building. I won't get into too many of the mm -hmm. details. And you're partially correct, but they can't push that building back for 170 feet, having a 200-foot frontage on Wanakew Avenue. They can't do that they, it, because of that curved line and the easement issues in the back. One other point I just wanted to make real, real quick. You know, we're trying to be, and, and I hope you've seen it, good members of the community. Obviously, Mr. and Mrs. Satrakian have been in town a long time. We're going to obviously have community benefits that we're looking for um, you to help us with in terms of anything community-wide. Uh, as we get through the project, we're here to help the community. Some people have suggested perhaps a waterway um, feature walkway or what have you. Some people have indicated perhaps um, maybe reprogramming some of the existing office space for municipal or civic purposes. So we're open to those ideas. We want to work with the community. We don't want to just simply uh, come in and say we're putting $90 million or $80 million into the town and that's it. We're not doing that. We want to work with the community, and we want everyone to hear that loud and clear. So with that, we're going to turn it over to Kevin, and he'll go through, and I'll be his um, scroller. <laughs> one, more, one more point I would like to make. Uh, as I mentioned this to some of you uh, in private, uh, it's far easier for us to go the uh, Canyon route, which would be essentially do what uh, Meridia is doing. Uh, as of right, uh, add or build in front 
but we probably would end up adding two or three floors to the existing buildings in front. And uh, putting a three, four story building in the back just wouldn't stick construction like 95% uh, of builders out there do. And uh, I'm dead set against that. That's what uh, uh, many people would recommend because that's the cheapest way, easiest way to do this. And I'm dead set against that. This is what, at least, I think this is what we should do. If not, go back to the original plan, which uh, is so dear to me. But on that note, uh, Kevin, why don't you get us going? Why don't you just start with your credentials and your background? Yeah, sure. Yeah, sure. Okay. Good, good evening. My name is Kevin Slanian. I'm an architect registered in New Jersey over 30 years. I'm from Bergen County, but I used to be the county architect. Uh, I used to work with Steve there about 10 years ago for three years, so I'm the Passaic County architect. So, so I'm familiar with the area. So basically, the, the site is uh, located in the heart of downtown redevelopment district, obviously, right? So as of uh, zoning allows, you know, 45 feet high, like Vasque mentioned, we could just do pancake, you know, four or five floors and, and, and call it a day, you know? So, so that total, uh, looking at the site, basically what we did is we took that square footage, right? So, and then left the front, the built area, the commercial area open and, and introduce a plaza that connects to the site in the back. So, but we added those square footage so we had a higher building, mid-rise building in the back. So right now the back is parking. Uh, we basically organize and 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 and. Can and you keep just tell us where you're going so we can follow? Yeah, on, on page, page two. Page two. Yeah, because we can't see that. You guys, okay. okay. you all have good small point. sets, so yeah, page two. Okay. So basically, the first one shows how the square footage you could basically fill the, the whole site except 15, put in the back setback and and some easement about 19 feet on the on the south side. So so taking that square footage, uh, as you, you go to page three, you see how it works. So basically, instead of doing a pancake, fill out the whole site, retail with the residential on top, we take all that and add it to the back, just go over the existing parking. So basically, existing parking stays, but gets, becomes reorganized and gets connected to the plaza with the, with the existing retail. So this sort of, it makes the whole area better and, 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 and improves the, the existing retail by activating it, bringing residences in the back. And um, so, so the, the slide on the left side is the pancake that Kevin's talking about. Correct. And on the right side is essentially the proposed building. Correct. So basically, uh, overall, it's about 10 above podium with mezzanine, so 12 levels of residential over retail. And we go through the how the previous design, how how we reduce the size and the scale and the volume from that. Can, can so, we just go back to the that one? No, one more. The one that has the pancake building on it. The flat plan? Uh, no, the I guess it's so number three. three. Yeah. Yeah, that's that's that one, right? No, it's our pages aren't the same. Our pages aren't the same. <coughs> They're not. No. They nope. Be. We don't have that. Oh, sure. And, uh, yeah, we got this one. That's all the yeah, that's, that's it. Yeah. That's that's page three. Correct. Uh, well, they're not numbered right there. Okay. Right there. The, yeah, right there. Yeah, that's the same yeah. one. We, don't, no, we, we just, just don't have the right. The difference, the difference is because I was going to point this out. The difference is on what we have. Yeah. You're not showing the two. Yeah, the we don't yeah. see the front building. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. That was added later. That was added. Later. Yeah. Okay. We don't see the front building, so. Yeah. What it looks like to us is that there's no buildings in the front. It's a beautiful front lawn. Yes. <laughs> yeah. So that far was, away from space. Well, yeah. Well, they, 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 so this this has the existing buildings with the plaza in the middle of the red blocks. So in the middle of the red blocks is where the plaza is, and that that section that building is going to be taken out to create the plaza, and then. Approximately 47, 48,000 square feet of non-residential retail office, whatever is there now, plus plus, because it's about 80% full, maybe 70% full, depending upon the lease arrangements. That then will stay as is, and then in the back, again, 170 feet from the curb line, you'll see this this building. Now that's from ground up. That's mm -hmm. not from one or two mm -hmm. avenue up. So we'll get into that in a minute. Okay, just wanted to clear that up. Sure, yes, no, that's yes, great. I just point. was confused. Yeah. That Bob added that later in the day, which 
prints were done already. <laughs> so now, compared to the previous design, we go to, uh, yeah, uh -huh. where you see the gray in the back, uh, the, that's the building with the dash in red. Is everybody on that page, John? This one? Yeah. We on this yes. one? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Now that one, yes. Okay. Um, it's the one with the red dots on it. With the red dash one. Red dash one. Do you have the page number right there? There's no page number. Yes. The problem is that we had to send this to the printer this morning and then uh, it was rushed. It yeah. was rushed. Uh, we, we apologize for that. And you guys know me, I make a lot of changes as we all do. So. Yeah. Anyway. So, so so the red dashed line, as you see, that that's the profile of the previous uh, concept of presentation. So so you see how the, 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 the back residential uh, floors shrunk. Also the front existing um, is, is almost like half, half the height of what was proposed before. So but basically overall with the square footage and the size, we shrank the volume of the, the construction, new construction, 40 percent, basically. Um, and the height went down about, you know, Bob mentioned 30 feet, about 26 feet, right? And about two floors. So. And the, the, the best part of it is the existing uh, retail relationship to the existing street, pedestrian and experience it stays the same. It just gets enhanced by the plaza. So, so you don't even see it when you're on the street, the building that's in the back. Yeah. Talk about the sight line. Yeah, the sight line, as you see, the person across the street. So with the, with the existing building, you see above it. So you see only partially the top few floors of the building, barely. If you're on the, on the side, on the west side uh, of the street, you're not even going to see it. So then basically, let's go to, let's skip this, let's go to the plans. So if, if you flip through, plaza. we're going to go to the plaza plans, which is, is the, it looks like this. Yeah. Okay. One more. So it is. It's a slide that shows the trees, the trees from above and the tables and stuff. It's that up there. Yeah. 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 Now it's there. We just skipped over some of the repetitive ones for you. So basically, above the parking, existing parking ground level parking that's self park, we're putting automated. Parking. So the system, what it is, is you drive through the ramp to the elevator. That's like the car. You leave it there, and that takes automatically parks. And you know, you have a key fob. You 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 park it, and then you just walk to the passenger elevator lobby. You go either to the retail level or or you go to plaza level or to your apartment. So there is about uh, 300. About 300, 400, yeah, yeah, altogether 400, altogether 400. But for the residences, basically, it's automated parking. So basically, when we remove that middle parking, uh, I mean middle building, so there's a ramp. You go down to the lower level, under the plaza, all the way to the to the building. The previous, the previous one. If you go to the previous page, that shows the ramp. Going to the pedestrian building. Pedestrian. Yeah. Previous. One, one page back. One page back. Yes. Um, yeah. One page back. Okay. So where you see the ramp, uh, you know, existing parking on the ground level is still they go from the side easement, they park as they do, and they could take the passenger elevator to the plaza level, uh, you know, do shopping or whatever. So, so the, the residents, they go down the ramp to the automated parking. You see those middle parking uh, mm -hmm. elevators? So they basically, you leave your car there and it, it parks itself, you know, basically. That's what it is. And the idea is that we don't yeah. want any cars backing up and uh, blocking the street. This way, as soon as somebody comes in, right. they go down the ramp and just like any... So, so that park. center one, just so we're all on the same page, that center driveway is only for the residents. Yes. That's for the residents. Yes. Perfect. In essence, we are essentially decoupling the building itself 
from the previous from driveway. We're saying that let the previous driveway okay. stay the way it is. Uh, everybody uses it, but including the public. Right. Uh, but the town, the apartment dwellers will use this. Uh, okay, but that, that does address a concern that we had at the West. Absolutely. Meeting. Traffic, the traffic mm -hmm. flow stays the same. We don't mm -hmm. add to it. So, so the, the residents go in from the middle of that uh, ramp and come out. Well, when they come out, they're also in the middle of that 50 foot opening. So there is clear sight to turn. So, and if, if they have to go down to the retail parking, they could also do that. So, so the traffic flow through the site, it's, 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 uh, it's not really adding to the traffic count. So, so it's isolated. Well, it's going to add to the traffic count. You to, can't make to, that to the one, yeah, one key avenue, it adds, but, but because it's the building set back almost 200 feet, so there's a queue area. So if the cars turn in, so you don't back into the avenue. So when they go yes. in and then... I would agree, unless everybody's leaving at the same time or coming in at the same it, time. It takes two minutes it's for the probably not going to be, that won't be an issue. But back. there will, but you, I just want to be clear with everyone. Yeah. It can't be a statement that a building with 200 and some odd apartments is not going to add exactly. some cars to want to queue at me. Because it is. No, sure, sure. Right, of okay. Yeah, that's of course. That's, that's all, all, all we want to say. Yeah. yeah, but we're not going to block the street. That's the big not, plus. Not what I'm saying. Yeah. Whereas with the previous design, with the previous design, the previous was design concern. was a big was a problem. Yeah. Right. So okay, that's okay. good. So so I think plaza level, obviously, once we have that opening between the buildings, uh, you know, we could open uh, storefronts on that plaza from the existing retail space, so that gets activated. And, and because this is hard of the redevelopment area, because you mentioned that the other people cannot do it, but maybe this will encourage other people to do similar, uh, you know, open spaces for the public. Yeah. So we have. Um, go to the. Okay, upper left. Okay. Okay. All right. So basically, uh, we're at the podium level. It's the one with the colored blocks. Right. This one. That colored block. And the colored blocks identify the bedroom type. Right. Okay. Right. So we're on the residential floors? Correct. Yes. We are at the podium level, which has a terrace in the back. It's a U-shaped building. So this, this uh, basically, um, the, way, the way it's done, because the core of the passenger elevators and the parking, they're all in the front. They're all together. So you don't have to get in the elevator from the parking, go somewhere else, take another elevator. So everything is within, contained within that core. So um, you have amenities on that level, and it's just above the podium level, it's 10 floors of residential of the same same layout, basically. Same breakdown of different uh, one bedrooms, uh, just a couple two bedrooms, and, and maybe two bedrooms with a, with a den, you know, that kind of stuff. So that's it. Well, more than likely, when we get that far, for COA, there's going to have to be some three bedrooms. Oh, we, we have, have that three scale. bedrooms. Okay. We have, we have, okay. We have se yeah. se seven percent, uh, just like Meridia, and just like the fire plant. Mm -hmm. Seven percent COA plus a contribution to bring it up to ten percent, and we we will comply with UHAC, bedroom count, mm -hmm. uh, low, moderate, very low income um, strata. No problem with that. Okay. Right, so let's go to the first section that shows the, how the ramp from the street comes and goes into the. So that is the the first building, if you will, elevation. with the section with the elevation. Next page. Next page. Okay. So as you see, when they the cars turn turn right in down the ramp and they go under the car, you see the car elevator. You know, they just drive in there, leave it, and, and walk out. Either they go to to the retail level or to the you know apartments. So in the back, under the podium, above the ground level parking, all that is automated, you know, so that basically it's efficient, no ramps, it's very compact. And, and obviously we haven't chosen the system of what system it be. It could even be lower because of the height. It could be like steel construction, or so it may even lower the, the height. Yeah, uh, to, so. to Kevin's point, uh, uh, we may be able to reduce the overall height a, a bit by with automated parking because we're being conservative. We're assuming 10 feet uh, floor to floor or ceiling to ceiling, but hopefully it will be a little bit less. But also keep in mind that that upper level of the parking is basically not needed. Uh, if, you, if we take the 1.5 uh, ratio of uh, uh, you know parking spots per apartment, if we use the uh, you know the 
lowest level, which is what we're trying to keep it for the public, we have enough parking. We don't need that uh, fifth level. But I think uh, for the long-term benefit of the town, uh, because parking is a problem in every town, and it's going to become increasingly so in this town, if you look at it from the standpoint of the long-term uh, vision for the town, you know, 20 years from now, 30 years from now, uh, it's going to be very hard for anyone else to provide this kind of parking, and this is not, uh, uh, to be honest, it's, it's not a good money maker for us. Parking doesn't really pay for itself. It's going to be an expensive proposition. It's almost like something we're doing because we, I believe that this is better for the town itself. So, okay. so if, you don't, if you don't want that... Line, right? Sorry? Is that stairs going into the walk out there? Oh, that's the plaza that did we put a little uh, amphitheater type seating in case you know you could have like events because if you have cafes opening into oh, the plaza... So so the yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, that's just cut through the set. I have a question on this. Yes. On this. I get I get the cars going down the ramp mm -hmm. and getting into the automated section, which I guess is one, two, three, four, five stories of automated parking. Yes. But how do the cars get to the bottom, which I guess is the public parking? Right. They go through the existing driveway. Oh, okay, but we don't. They don't. <laughs> you can't see that from here, I guess. Yeah. This, this, <laughs> this next one, section, you would see two after. pages. Okay. Right. Well, we, we go further. Yeah, yeah, pages. Like we're going section by. But section. I see that one poor car backed up against the wall, that last one on the right, you know, it's kind of like, it's yeah. not going anywhere. Yeah, yeah. And, and I, I, we introduced the dash line to see the outline of the, the previous design, yep. so you could still see how uh, how it works. This is more efficient with it because it's more compact and, and uh, okay, so the next slide will show the same RAM with the, with the, with the elevator course, how it works. Because that that goes all the way down to the ground parking. So if anybody parks there, yeah, anybody parks there, they want to go to the retail level. So, so they where is the elevator Kevin? right here or, with the gray area with the doors? You see the elevator core. See, there's an elevator core. I'll put my cursor on it. Yeah, right there, right here. That's the elevator core from the top of the podium to the top of the the floor. Could you show that again? It's right here. Yeah, you have your. Yeah, it's not, it's not showing. Yeah, it's not showing. Oh. That's the arrows there. Yeah. I, I have okay. no idea what you're pointing at. It's not showing. Is there a stick or it's not, it's not showing on the screen? Yeah. The, the, the laser. So it's, it's, Mr. Chairman, it's this point right here, right above, between the yellow and the gray shade. There's a shaft that goes up. Oh, okay. Oh, I see it, yeah. That's the narrow shaft between the yellow and the gray on the right. right. That's the elevator shaft for pa for passengers. Right. And that goes, uh, uh, okay. Mr. Chairman, that goes from the right. very top of the building, the front of the building. Oh, all the way right. down to the, the parking right. level. Okay. Only again for the residents. So no. what What about the front? Well, the visitors also, visitors, if they want. Only for the apartment building. Let me phrase it that way. Well, we may we may we may provide for access to the public if they want to park uh, at the parking level and take the elevator to the plaza level. Right. Okay. Let me let me phrase it a different way. You mentioned to us before, and this is not testimony. We're just having a conversation. Um, in our conversation before, you mentioned that the automated parking is just for the apartments. Yes. Right. Okay. So if I park my car, if I have an apartment there and I park my car, uh -huh. I go to an elevator and I can take that elevator right up to my apartment floor? Yeah. And you have to have your car to be Whatever, to I would imagine that, okay. If I park at the bottom level and want to... But you are what, you are a resident? Or no, let me finish. Yes, now I come in and park at the bottom level. Right. Okay, I gotta somehow get to the plaza level. Yes, you, you'll be able to, I'll you'll take the elevator. I'm going to take an elevator. I get it. I, just let me finish. Okay. Is that going to be the same elevator that the people going up to the apartments use? Not all of them go down, but maybe one or two will be dedicated just to, to do that. Yes. So those then are going to have, and I know this is way in front of us, but those are going to have some kind of key card control then so that they can't get to the residential floors. Well, the elevator is absolutely yes. When you push the button from the lower level, so you can only go to the main level to go to the plaza. It's not unless you key yourself in to go to the other Okay. Levels. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, you're gonna have to separate the elevators. Yeah. yeah. Because if I'm a resident and I step into the same same elevator mm -hmm. car, 
if I same, step in the same elevator car as somebody that's using the public and I key my card going up to the 12th floor and I've got somebody from the public, that means they can also ride up to the 12th mm -hmm. floor at that point because I, I've now keyed into it. So I think you're going to have to have a separate elevator car for that. I'm trying to get that. We, yeah. could, we, we put four elevators. Not We may not need all of them, so one of them could yep. be just dedicated for the Perfect. plaza. Yep. That's not a problem. But they're all in the same area. We well, that's have, fine, yeah. but I think... If, right. I think the public one just goes to the yeah, closet. We're getting into like okay. details. Yeah, I get it. We're not just so you can start to think about it. That's a good yeah. point. That's yeah. a good point. Okay. Well, okay. So now, okay. Then the next slide going. Any, any questions on this one? Can we flip to I, what, what impresses me about this when I look at this slide? And um, just sort of, I can't wait to see this building built and populated. What I like the most is that stadium that uh, can be created. It doesn't take up any space. It just goes above the ramp. And people can sit there and we can have events. It's going to be good. It's going to be happy. We're going to have about 8,000 square feet of for our plaza. It's not as big as before, but it's very easy. OK, where are we at? OK, so basically, nice. last, last page, they're all, they're all uh, Showing the same. Do you have which one? Do you have? Yeah. Well, this one. Uh, the next one. Yeah, I don't know if it's in the print. Do you have a print that shows the elevations? Can you show the elevation? While you're looking for that, where will the retail be in front of the net? <coughs> Retail on in the new construction? In the, in the big, yeah. Yes, if we go to the plaza level plan, you see uh, it's about 5,000 square feet now big so in front of the, the automated parking. In front of the Yes, uh, that's the plaza level. Uh, okay. You want to show the plaza level? So that's the addition to what you have already. That's correct. Yeah. Correct. Yeah, it, it we're, we're going to have almost, uh, like, we're going to have almost uh, 60,000 square feet of commercial, which is going to be a unique, uh, you know. And oh, also, I'm sorry, it's right after the park. There you go, right there. Right there. So if I'm looking at P3 on this sheet, yeah. Yes. Yeah. Well, the on the right. left side, where it says retail and commercial, that's either retail or commercial. Yes. yes. Okay. <coughs> that's about 5,000 square feet because we're taking the middle okay. building out already. Yeah, uh, the so. architect, the, our architect is saying that we are decreasing the square footage, although I, I was not factoring into the 50,000. 50,000 is Mount Plaza and the Vincara building, which we are calling Hagemar. Uh, those two add up to almost 50,000 square feet. The middle building has three small uh, Boutiques, uh, two of them are hair salons, and the square footage there is, you know, not even 2,000 square feet. So we're not losing hardly anything. And then we're adding another 5,000 in the back. Plus, what's going to happen is that right now, if you walk into Fontaine Plaza, like where my office is, all that back area is, you know, offices. That will turn into retail because we'll have the frontage on, on the plaza. That that is going to make uh, a big difference in terms of how the street level between Compton Plaza and the Vincara building will be. Used. Mm -hmm. Okay, that makes sense. Okay, where are we at? Uh, just one second. Now there's a there's a last page, but I I, I believe it's missed. Oh uh, no, it's, it's the third page from the last. Yeah, so the print, the printer, maybe. third page from the list. Yes, yeah, go to the last one. What shows this existing? Uh, there you have it. This one. Yeah. So side side elevation south. Exactly. That's where it shows the existing uh, the driveway that goes down to the ground mm -hmm. level. Okay. So remember, uh, someone mentioned that. I did. Okay. Yeah. I got it. So the existing driveway is going to stay as is. It's going to be 19 feet wide, as it has always been. And it still will remain most probably a one-way down. And people will have to Nothing go back. Change. Sorry? Yeah. Nothing will change. Nothing will change. Essentially, it will be like before. We're not increasing any traffic density to, to that. You know, it's going to stay as mm -hmm. it is now. And hopefully, the Windsor School will be able also to <laughs> Oh, 
There's well, obviously that, going to be is, less is, surface is, parking, which is fine. It's your property. No, no, the it's, surface parking is the same. What do you mean? How is the surface? It is and, the and same. The, the, not, we don't, the surface parking, we have uh, we have about 80, 80 parking spots now. We're going to have the same, uh, in, but it's going to be in the building. Well, yeah, so no, it's no, being closed. It's right. going to be inside the building. Right, but I mean, right. my guess would be, and this oh. is just my guess, is you're not going to have that open for Windsor School people and Windsor School to use. Correct. You're correct. Right? I mean, that kind of, sure. it just can't if be they logical. Paid, if they pay, uh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's a common line. So, so, Mr. Chairman, we have for your orientation on the board. It's not before you. I know, Mr. Mayor, maybe we should put that in more flat so the agency see it as well. That's the outline of the project that, that Kevin just went over. It's the, again, it's block 3000, lot 10, 9, 8, 7, and 6. You get the perspective of the distance between the front retail and the back. And the essentially lot 9 will be the plaza area. That will be taken out, if you will, or largely taken out and replaced with the plaza and the drive. The rest will remain. We then have the back perspective, and you show we actually this was a drone shot that Stonefield took, and this actually shows some of the issues with the buses and the Windsor School in the back. Then we have uh, just an overall aerial shot where we have the perspective of the new what I call Salvation Army apartments mm -hmm. and the other apartments over by the railroad tracks. So the height. As we, we develop the overall scope, the height is within this. Then we get some project history. We just wanted to, to remind everyone that this is the, well, one was April 20th last year was a subcommittee meeting, and this is our third presentation. I think that we've gotten a, a better perspective. The 2020 project looked like this and like this. And it's massive. Um, you know, again, we went back and forth with this proposal over that two year period through the pandemic. This was our uh, original concept that Mr. Satrakian still, um, you know, enjoys. And we all look at it from time to time, but we'll move past that, obviously. And then I just wanted to go over that uh, some of the key data points. The first is that we will be retaining three small residential units. So we, we have that included in the retail. I call it retail. It's not really commercial either. There's professional services are in there and it's non-residential. So we have that 48,000 to 50,000 square feet. I'm sorry, go, go do ahead. That, do that again. Sure. I'm, I'm not sure what you're telling me. Sure. So we have in the um, current building three residential units, <coughs> small residential units, about 450 to 500 square feet each. Those are remaining. Those will remain together with the 47,000 or so square feet. We'll add the 5,000 square feet in the rear to make it approximately 50 to 52,000 square feet of what I call retail, but it's really non-residential. There's some professional offices. We have an accounting <coughs> firm there, a real estate firm, and obviously Mr. Satrakin's offices, etc. Um, but it will be retail oriented to the best degree possible. We'd like to see some restaurant use in there. We're going to have 385 parking spaces um, for this project, and that is inclusive of Mr. Satrakin's note on that additional, if you will, um, parking lot. We did the um, study on the persons and the school aged children. The school aged children has dropped down. Uh, to 26 from approximately 45 to 50 and the um, total population or number of persons drops down to 374 from approximately 550, 525 from the last study. Can you reiterate the school age children numbers? School age children numbers, yeah, it would be approximately 26. 26 down from what was before? Uh, just around 45 to 50. Okay. Yeah, Thank you. and it, really the generator of the is the affordable housing. Is the affordable housing? Yeah, you, you'll see the multiples of two, two point four, and two point seven seven. Yeah, and we have that uh, in there. You'll see that we used for the school-aged children's out the UHAC program of four one bedrooms, 
uh, four three bedrooms and eight two bedroom units. So that's the 16, 15, 16 units, 16 units. And then the rest will be paid in the contribution. And we use sort of uh, Meridia as a, a guide. We also have the, the text that implements the um, redevelopment plan uh, for your context. I'm just going to go through it real quickly. We have a, a, a modification to the DRA1 zone through the uh, an existing paragraph C. I'm not going to bore you. But what we basically did is we used both in the DRA1 zone, that's the downtown redevelopment area zone, and the DBD1 zone. And we married them together so that where there's a lot that has the, the height dimensions and, the, and, and it is in your um, PCD plan commercial development area and in the redevelopment area, if you have a lot that has 200 feet of frontage and the building is set back 170 feet from the curb line, you can then take advantage of the height. And we call that specifically expanded lot dimension standards. I just put the one ordinance on the board just so you can see it's textual. And then the other textual issue is with the ordinance implementing the underlying zoning. So the underlying zoning is the um, DBD1 zone. And th that zoning wasn't wasn't really modified um, when we implemented the DRA one zone, marrying it to the DBD one zone. It wasn't really changed much except for the 750 square feet and some parking, shared parking concepts. Other than that, the underlying zoning has remained intact for generations until you modified for Meridia. Our, our problem is, if you will, Mr. Chairman, is that the the geometry of the site is what our financial company is looking for us to try to pin down. And again, I, I can't stress it enough. We will work with your professionals. We will work with your elected officials. We will work with, we will have public forums if you'd like. Uh, we will do whatever you want uh, in terms of participation. But it's the geometry that we need to get over. And I, what I mean by geometry is just that was the, out, that. Out, out, the outline of the building that you see in the slides. And is the sight line data, is the bulk data, is this, is this reduction from the prior, is this reduction with the red dash line from the prior plan sufficient? And is it more of a likable plan by the redevelopment agency? This is going to cost approximately 75 to $80 million to bring to market, to build, maybe more. And we have three will-serve letters from PSE&G, uh, from the water utility. We have a qualified will-serve letter from the sewer utility. I don't want to get into a lot of site plan issues or even redevelopment agreement issues. But that's Mr. Satrakian's. I don't want to say dilemma or conundrum, but that's the spot he's in, where our financial backers are saying, look, if you can generate the geometry, we're all in. If you can't ge generate the height and the bulk standard, we're going to sit back. And that means that we're going to have to continue to invest and continue to invest. I just am throwing it out there that that's our issue. And again, I can't stress enough, we'll work with everyone. And we'll take all comers, and we're going to do something that's going to be what we think to be an award-winning uh, design. Kevin's on board now. We still have Marcello Higgins. We still have um, Wednesday Night involved. And we still have the group at Stonefield. We have a replete, you know, Class A team. And, of course, Mr. Satrakian and Mrs. Satrakian are here. And we have a builder lined up. You met him, Mr. Asika. He's in Houston right now on a, on a major project site. So that's our issue. Thank you very much for your time tonight. If you have any questions, anybody does, we'd be glad to answer them. Move uh, down the line. <laughs> is this new building really the glass, glass tower like the last one was going to be? Well, not, not exactly. It's going to be broken down. Some corner units are, are floor to ceiling looking outside in the glass, but the window actually <coughs> operates at 
two and a half feet. And some of the other windows, they go down about, uh, eight, you know, about a foot, 18, you know. Yeah. Yeah. So they're not all glass box like it was before. That that wasn't feasible. Looks fantastic. That's the love of it. I love it. Thank you. So, yeah, I said, he said he loves it. I would say... Um, you said you love it? I love it. Which one? This one or the first one? Probably the first one. That's not great. Well, the kid, kid, kid said something to me uh, the other day which uh, encouraged me about this one. Because I wasn't as much in love with this as with the previous one. He said this is more uh, uh, unique in the sense that it fits... Uh, it, you know, it fits all the requirements of a redevelopment zone in a small community like, like this. You know, Kevin, you may want to add a few points about Try that. that. Is, is how, how unique, how unique could be this could transform the downtown? Because we're preserving, we're preserving the commercial, which uh, one of the issues I had with the previous design was uh, I was mourning the loss of all that commercial space. Because frankly, we have decent tenants. Yes, some of them are keeping us on a short leash because they don't know where we're going to go, and many of our leases are month to month. But you know, someone like uh, you know, uh, like Annabelle who has the uh, Hagemax place, it's thriving. I mean, she's being able to attract people from New York City, and uh, I had difficulty imagining tearing down that uh, space. So this does that. It solves that problem. So. Mm -hmm. So basically, so, it keeps the downtown, um, small town experience intact. It just enhances it by activating. It. So, so, that's so, 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 good enough. <laughs> My model maker brought me this freshly 3D printed. First time I see it. So, uh, this is the old design, and this is the new design. And we can pass it around so you guys can take a look at it. Mr. Chairman, and you can keep it. <laughs> I think Mr. Kimberlin was. Yeah, yeah go ahead. So I think I, I like how you're keeping some of the existing buildings. I think that's a very strong positive to this. Um, I, think I also did like the other building too, as well. Um, with a lot to, you know, a lot of the feedback on the height. Um, yeah, I, I, think I, I think I like it quite a bit, so um, interested to see more as you guys put more details around it. So we want you guys to not only just say yes, we want you to get so excited about this. <laughs> like we are. <laughs> <laughs> this, is, this is what we need. We need everybody to support the project, uh, not just uh, a few. Without exception, I want everybody to support it. Okay. Eric. So when you came here in August with the, the previous plan, the one that you love, um, one of the things I did love was the plaza. And I said even then that there's always a give and take, right? You build a bigger building, you have this really nice plaza, everything like that. So when I knew, you know, again, but I also shared my concerns about the height and the, the overall massing of the building. So I was a, a little bit concerned when I knew that obviously you had to scale back the building that the plaza, which became one of, I think, one of the essential elements of the site, might have been lost. So the fact that you were able to preserve it in some manner um, and maybe even enhance it with the seating, um, while also scaling back the building, not only in terms of height, but also the overall size and distance from the from the thing. You have a unique property. It's it's a deep property. You know, obviously, there, it's still a tall building. But you are taking advantage of the fact that you are have do have a deep property, so it's from a you know from a street level standpoint, it's not quite. We're not talking about apples and oranges here. Like we're talking, you know, we're we're, we're doing we're two two different things at this point. So I think this project is much improved from the last time I saw it. Um, so again, you know, overall, I th I think I think this project is 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 much better. Um, and I feel a lot more comfortable with it today than I did back in August, for sure. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, keep in mind that the plaza is going to be very costly to build because uh, we're not taking advantage of the fact like we're putting all the foundation work and we're just building the plaza. Uh, the only benefit we're getting is the ramp. But uh, it's a pretty costly proposition to put a plaza like that at the street level. And we're doing that because we believe it's going to be good for everybody. Abby. Oh, okay. So, um, 
Um, okay, I'm, I'm glad that you, you reduced the, the height of it. Um, it is still high, you know, and, and so that is, is still a concern for, for me, and I, I don't know. And it just seems kind of a little out there for us that, like, here we are as the redevelopment agency, and we're we're taking it to, like, double, double the height. How high is it? What's, like, at the street level? What is it, 10 stories, 12 From stories? From the street level, you have the podium. Mm -hmm. The podium is going to be 40 foot tall. Okay. Uh, because you have the the retail, and then on top of that, you have a mezzanine level. Right. Uh, and then on top of that, you have 10 floors uh, times 10. So that's 140. Total. 140. And it was 170. No, no, it was, it was more like uh, yeah. 186. 186. Right. right. But see, so you're telling me what it was, and I'm saying to you, we only have five stories. Um, right. And we don't even have those yet. We're, we're going to have those yeah, in a moment. Yeah. So it just seems like our agency is taking a big leap and i and that's okay if we want to take it but is it really like our agency or where is the overall concept or um where's the town going where's the where's the vision and i feel a little uneasy when a developer even though i, I like your ideas and i think your quality when a developer comes in and presents a vision that's going to like change the whole concept of the town well we haven't thought about that yet that makes me uneasy. So I think that we need to like kind of maybe regroup as an agency and, and come up with a, a visual and a concept a concept for what we want the town and get the input from our from our citizens before we just take this one project and then that's gonna be you know, I guess that everything else will follow after that. And and that's okay, but then do we want twelve, fourteen story buildings? And going again, forward. As, uh, and I know you said that nobody uh, else can do that, but we have I mean, funny, funny, that's just real quick. This has always been, a, it's going to necessarily be, and maybe I'm stating the obvious, a at least a two step process. The, the, re, the redevelopment agency can't approve and let them build it. The right. governing body has to change the plan. Right. So, it, 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 so maybe 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 that was implicit in what you were saying. But no matter what you do, yes, yeah, okay. I, you know, I understand that. I just I'm just feeling a lot like you know the 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 tail's wagging the dog rather than the dog wagging the tail, that kind of thing. Sure. So that makes me a little concerned. Yeah, I like your concepts. I like your ideas. But I I like to have like oh that kind of fits in our in our overall scope and vision. But I don't really have an idea of what our overall scope and vision is, and I'd like to have that before I decide on this one particular project. I'm sorry, but that's, I mean, I'm, I have said those kinds of things over and over again over many years, and I think it's a big change, and I want to be really comfortable with that big change. I want everybody to be comfortable with that big change. Um, but I, I do like it. I do like the fact that it's the volume's reduced 40%. I like that you did reduce the height a bit. I think I hear that you have a little wiggle room. It could reduce a little bit more. I wouldn't mind seeing that a little bit. A little bit. Um, I mean, as I drive up Mount Nav when I'm going up to Caldwell, and I see that big, I don't know, maybe how many stories? Maybe someone would know the Willowbrook. Um, maybe it's 10 stories. That that's not that's not a nice looking building, mm -hmm. and and that stands out. These are nice looking that you're presenting, so I'm happy about that. But what I'm saying, that that is something that reminds me every day when I drive up that way. That you know, Route 46 going to Route No, 40? going up Mountain Avenue, going into the Caldwells, and you're looking like through the woods, and you see that that large, tall building down in the Willowbrook area. It it just kind of is. The one in Montcoy, those big buildings, new big apartment buildings. Willowbrook. Think of Willowbrook. I'm in Willowbrook. Okay, and you're Willowbrook, and you look out, and there's some like 10-story, maybe 12-story buildings. Down in Willowbrook, if you're like if you're looking at where Bloomingdale's is or was, yeah. and you look out, do you know where the, I'm talking about? Yeah, yeah those office yeah. buildings. Yeah, and so like when you're in, when you're sitting like when you're going up Mountain Avenue and you're in like the, it's a nice neighborhood, you look down at that building and it's not such a nice looking building because I think you know it wasn't really it wasn't really put together with a lot of um, like you know ideas of what it's going to look like down down the road. So I want to make sure that we we have a co cohesive plan before we just just say yes. Mm -hmm. And and um I and I just that's what I think we know it's well thought out that we have our professionals looking at it. We and then we also have to understand like the congestive congestion in the area and things like that. I know we're we're um doing redevelopment but we do have a very narrow 
roadway. I just would like us to kind of have thought this out and then say yes with an overall concept in our minds of what the town's going to look like 10, 10 years from now. Does that make any, does that make sense? <laughs> and also, I mean, like, does it, does it, does it go, with, do we have, I haven't looked at our, um, our overall um, master plan, but how does this fit in with the master plan? Like, do they talk, do we talk back and forth? Do we, the we master plan refers to redevelopment. Okay. No. It refers, you would know that. It refers to um, so many stories along the main street. So yeah. this would be, you know, um, veering away from what's in there right now. Right. Right. So I, I just so that would need to be revisited in the work of the council. Yeah. So that's it. I mean, I just think it, I mean, I like the fact that you scale back. I like the fact that you still have the. Um, a plaza, a different plaza, but you do have it. Um, the volume's reduced. I mean, that's all good. It's just that it is still large, and it's um, beyond the the scope of what our um, master plan is, or and what the what we have in our in our you know our vision right now. And and it's fine to to move ahead, but I don't like to move ahead one one um, one um, project at a time. I'd, I'd like to have an overall concept. That's what I'd like to see. I mean, Ab, I, I appreciate your. I know. I appreciate that. Yeah. But I guess the question becomes, yeah, that stops redevelopment. Well, and not really. We, I just think that you know, I, I, why don't we have like um, designs and concept uh, concepts kind of figured out what we're looking for instead of asking. Um, well, 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 let's assume we did that. Yeah. Okay. And for however long that takes. Right. Okay. If these folks wanted to build something, or if anybody wanted to build something. Yeah. Would they have to wait for us? Well, uh, yeah, I, I know that. And now that's because we're kind of in, we're, we're already in the process. So here we slow things down. I, I get what you're saying. But if we're going to go with this, then how how is it going to affect the rest of it? And maybe we ought to think about that. Well, here, here there, I, I have a, a few opinions. First of all, the redevelopment agency is not a planning body. Okay. There, it, it, it's to effectuate the redevelopment plans and the redevelopment zones and what's been laid out. So, like, the idea that the redevelopment agency would provide a vision of what we want to see in the redevelopment plan, that's where the master plan comes from. That is derived by the planning board mm -hmm. um, through their master planning process. We are, there, we are here to basically look at things site by site, not to envision the whole thing. The second thing is... With regard to that, I mean, I mean, ultimately, you know, we, we can, I mean, we had a, there was a concept plan that was developed by Passaic County in probably 2004, 2005. Here's the downtown redevelopment. Here's what we would like it to look like. But ultimately, it's also what the market will bear. And each, each site is going to be de determined based on a subject of factors like this. Like, we could say that the master plan says provide up to five to six stories. But are we considering a site that accommodates a building that can be set 170 feet back from the street line? And what is the effect on that? You can't conceive of every every single thing, but that's why you need to have flexibility in your redevelopment plan, being able, being, being willing to amend the redevelopment plan as appropriate based on what the property owner is, what a potential developer brings to us. But, you know, again, there's a lot of moving pieces. It would be nice for everything to be married. Right, I just don't think it, I, I just don't, being in the field, I just don't know how reasonable it is. Well, I, 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 see, what, I see what you mean with moving pieces. I like, I like the concept. I like the building. I like that it's 40% uh, less volume. I think you can see that in the, in the model that was created. So that's good. Um, I'm still not sure if it's, if it's low enough, if, if, if like if the 14 stories is, is low yeah. enough. Okay. Um, I like it. I like, like she said, I like that it's been reduced in the size and the scope of it. Um, I like the new concept uh, and the way it looks. Um, we talked about reducing the height with the parking. Just keep in mind, we drive a lot of big vehicles these days. So I don't know how much you're really going to gain there uh, on the height. Um, I don't know what the limits are of the, the elevator system for the self-parking um, and size vehicle limit size or whatever. But um, yeah, I mean, I like it. I think the the 3D model prints help you actually visualize how much of a difference this uh, in size you've made with the building, more so than the drawings to a certain extent. Right. I, like I, yeah. I mean, I, I think you've you know you've listened to the concerns of the agency. 
and the folks that are up here. I, I think, I mean, I think the model helps some, but what I think really helps is the model that has the dashed lines on it. Because one of the things I think you have to remember in this building, since it went back 170 feet, not only is it lower, it's smaller. So the bulk of the building is, is tremendously reduced. Um, <clears throat> I happen to very much like the idea of the plaza. I think rethinking that driveway um, was a, a significant improvement in the project. Um, having the, the driveway under the plaza only for the apartment building is terrific. Um, I think there are still, and this is not necessarily your issue that we can fix, but I still think there's issues with the remaining driveway, what we call the, the alley driveway. Um, I think there's issues with the easement. Um, I've done some research on that easement. I think some properties have changed hands that I wasn't aware of um, uh, in regards to solar in particular, which I think the school owns now, um, at least from what I could get from our town records. Um, so, so there's, there's, I, I, think, I think the school does, but that's what I kind of got from the deeds, no? Look no. at the deed. Look in the deeds. I was talking to the general manager of Thor. Okay. You talk Thor Fox today? Yeah. I just talked about it today. It was okay. sold to a bunch of uh, people in the same business. It was just sold like two months ago. Yeah, that's what I saw. But, yeah, I, but, but not, not this winter. I'll talk to you later. We'll take a look at the right. records. I went on, on the maps and looked at the the uh, the, um, the deeds. Okay. It's crazy. We, we had uh, two, two attorneys in our prime counsel mm -hmm. look at this, as well as two title companies. The solar company has a right of passage. Yes, that's uh, correct. They can't merge that lot and keep that easement. If they merge the lot, they lose the easement. So that that's an issue, and they're gonna they're gonna have mm -hmm. a problem. That is our property. They just have a right. No, I get. It. I know what an easement is. I yeah, get it. I don't have to be electric. Fair. I get it. I, I don't mean to electric. Okay. Um, so I think I think you've done a terrific job in listening to us um i think the project is significantly better um but i think like most of the other people up here i like the first one also i mean you couldn't not like it um i just don't think it fit um i think that with the reduced height with the reduced bulk with an existing plaza and remember everyone up here okay when the um, smith project came to us um a couple of years ago, the first one iteration, and we were sitting up here going crazy about losing mm -hmm. a store. And remember we talked about that, going from six stores or six stores to five stores, and we wanted to make sure they maintain their retail. Here we have an app, a potential applicant that's keeping 50,000 square feet of retail and commercial business, commercial property. So, I mean, that's a huge, a huge thing. Um, so I think, as I look at this, in exchange for keeping that retail and commercial property, um, ex in exchange for moving the building back and creating a plaza, I think we can give a little extra height. Um, so I I'm on board with this the way it is. Mike. Yeah, um, you know, look, you, you listen to what we have to say. You reduce the, I, I like the project, but I think we're overlooking a couple things that go into what Abby was pointing out. This gentleman is presenting a plan that one is trying to keep his established businesses that have been in town a long time in town and still build the, the building. That's a big plus because in a lot of the other redevelopment we do, they have to remove the, the retail, the building, and hope the retail comes back. So this gentleman's trying to keep the retail there. The other thing that we also talked about, you're going to refrap the front of that, those the existing buildings, correct? Yes. yes. That's all you're going to that in. Yes. <clears throat> In a part. So that's going to all give a new face to the, the building in the front right there. Mm -hmm. and, and the other thing is, you know, we have, I agree with what the chairman said, this is set back pretty far. Mm -hmm. 170 feet is pretty far off the street. The, it, we all know what the, what's back here. It's a big hole, right? So you're only seeing half of that going up. I don't disagree with, with that. It's high. It is. It's high. No question, it's high. Um, and is the town ready for this? I don't know. But I personally think it's a nice project. What we have to remember, and I think we overlook this a lot, this gentleman could build six stories on his existing, what he has right now, and not have to come to any points. He would be in his realm to build anything he wanted, as long as he still keeps the height. You know, there might be some little side variants. So either way, he's going to build something in this site. 
and it could be six stories, and it could just be a stick building like some of the other projects, or we get some, some benefit out of what we're looking for. That, that's the way I'm looking at it. We have to, either way something's being built there. It's not staying the way it is. So we have to do the best job we can to make it fit the town, and at the same time, let's not forget about the pilot side of this too. You know, this could bring in revenue of over $500,000 a year. Um, I can tell you just doing a budget now, well, it's a very tight budget right now. There's a lot of increases in a lot of things, and we don't have an industrial park in our town. So where are we getting that money as years go forward? We're getting money from the taxpayers. That's where we're getting money. <laughs> so that's just like, you know, there's a lot of pieces in this idea. But they have to say, it's not just one, let's do this. There's a lot of ways to look at it. I think what these gentlemen are looking for is just an idea of a feeling of, of the hype. That's what they're here to ask about. It's the hype. You know, the rest of the project, I think people need to like. Okay. Let me see I think, the TV off. Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Oh, okay. Is that what happened? I wondered what happened. Okay, I think what we want to do at this point. <laughs> we're going to take a little break and watch Jeopardy. <laughs> um, at this point, what I'd like to do is if anyone would like to um, ask any questions, either of us or the applicant, um, we'll open this up for 10 or 15 minutes for questions. Um, and then we'll move on to um, Passaic County. Anyone from the public want to have anything to say? Seeing none, we'll close the public portion. Okay, folks. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Have a good night. Thank you very much. Thank you for the effort you put into this. Thank you. Thanks for your feedback. Okay. Um, next up is um, Passaic County um, Senior Housing, 519 Ringwood Avenue, Block 2300, Blocks 1, 7, and 10, and Block 2600, Block 3. This is also conceptual, I believe. This is not an application. It said it's not yet. Yeah. This is also not an application yet. I don't know. Uh, secretary. I don't believe an application has been filed for this high school. Okay. Our understanding was that you were going to consider approving the RDA. That yeah. was. That's not that. I haven't spoken with the borough council. There are still a few things to go before that can be considered. The terms are pretty darn close. The okay. salt dome, the one way in, one way out. Those things have to be. Okay. The salt dome not us. Excuse me. Salt dome not us. That's the county. I agree, I understand that, but I think that the borough wants that resolved before okay. the agreement gets done. But I, you know, th there's been a draft okay. agreement that is. I mean, it's the biggest part of the, the agreement of the agreement is you. what they're approving, and that's what they have to see, which is why I wanted to, right. you know, to, as close as you can get okay. to planning board plans, that's their decision. The terms are the terms. But I, well, no, but the, even so, the redevelopment agreement, as we've done it before, keep going back to this, does include what we want. That's what I'm saying. That's right. the biggest thing. That right. is the biggest thing. The terms are, you know, the, the written part is okay. Has, we just is need to see what it's going to be. But the, yeah, yeah. But and that's that's the agreement. Yeah, we're here to show you that. That's what okay. gets attached to attachment yeah. A. That's the important stuff. Just okay. because I know my client's going to ask, when's your next meeting? Next month. Third, third, Thursday. Third, third, Thursday, Thursday of March. Great. Okay, thank you. Uh, <laughs> yeah, okay. and, I, and I can and I can okay. convey the the, ter the terms of the agreement are, are are pretty close to what this this agency likes, likes except for the attached net. What are they approving? That's right. Well, that's that's what Steve's going to take you through. Right. Okay. Yeah. Okay, this is still not testimony. Right? No. no, not testimony yet. Just, just conversation. Let's hear. Okay. okay. Fine. But we'd like to know who you are and what's going on. Sit <laughs> down. Uh, thank you. Uh, my name is Bill Northgrave. I'm the uh, attorney for the Passage County Affordable Housing Corporation uh, in uh, this uh, project. No. Steve Cotton, okay. principal in Cotton Montalbano Architects, go to New Jersey, uh, testified before many boards of the last 42 years, including this one. Yes, you have. The, uh, <laughs> the author of Montalbano Lake Senior Housing, 
He passed quite a while ago, but that was a Section 202, uh, 202 Section 8 project cut. We also did the Butler project the same way. Uh, this is quite different. It has a little bit more artistic flair and a little more design to it, but it's the same purpose. Mm -hmm. Provide housing for seniors. Okay. So, uh, uh, I, yes, sure. uh, I just have a question. I don't know if you've thought this one through. Maybe you have. Um, is this a project that you, you know, if it, it was the county have to say doing a county function, like building a road or a county building, you wouldn't go to the planning board for site plan approval. You go for capital review. This is not really that. It's, it's one step away. <coughs> and, I, and I'm not saying you do or you don't. I haven't thought about it. And, and boards are tasked with boards. Is this something you have the position you, that you have a position on that, whether or not you're going to the planning board and you require we're, we're going to and you require that. site plan approval? Yeah, we were. It's yeah. it's it is. And it's a continuum. Me, I'm, of I'm an attorney, so I'm used to standing. So I feel like I'm being disrespectful by sitting. Oh, stand up. That's fine. Uh, <laughs> uh, yeah, because normally I get yelled at if I'm not standing. Um, How dare you sit in front of this board? Well, that's, that's that's exactly that's exactly what I'm saying. Uh, as just real, real briefly on that, uh, say County Affordable Housing Corporation is uh, was formed by the County of Passaic. Our trustees are uh, not all, but a, a many of the commissioners, Passaic County commissioners, um, and we have gone back and forth several times about you know the, the group of us that are working on just Steve and I about is this a public project? Is this a private project? for purposes of OPRA, uh, prevailing wage, those types of things, my advice has been let's treat it as if it's a public project. For purposes of planning board review, um, that type of thing, let's treat it as a private project, not ask for a, just a courtesy review or capital review. Let's just treat it as if, as if we're a private corporation, which, which we are, a private corporation owned by a public entity. So are you a private not-for-profit corporation? Yes. yes. Okay. So there's no tax impact? That we're there going is. We're going, to, we're going to pay a pilot. You're going to pay a pilot. That also gets, yeah. a very, okay. gets to be a complicated okay. issue. Okay. Um, but we have, we have essentially agreed to those terms. At least I understand there's been an agreement as to the terms. Uh, because it's going to be an affordable project, um, you know, it, it, will, it would be, uh, it's not the subject to the long-term tax exemption, the 5.5, I mean the 10% annual gross revenue of the uh, long-term tax exemption law. Um, but also, uh, the my understanding is is not my understanding. The, the agreement is that this is going to be um, Pompton Lakes presi uh, residents, residents first, veterans preference. Mm -hmm. The whole structure of how our financing was set up got complicated because there were certain buckets of money we could not tap without exposing us. To, to having to accept residents from outside the, the town. So that is, and that's in our administrative plan. Just file with HUD, has to be approved by HUD. And that's that's what we're operating on. Can I just jump in just to double check? So I want you guys to be aware of this too. So the agreement, and I think part of those agreements worked out with the administration and myself, was that it was Pompton Lakes residents first for veterans and for seniors. Yes. Okay, that it was North County from that point on, and meaning north of us, uh, and that was supposed to be written out into an agreement. My question to the, you guys would be, where is that going to be written into an agreement? How, how would that be worked into? Is it worked into the pilot agreement? Is it worked into a separate agreement? I, I would say that would probably be worked in as a reference in the redevelopers preference, agreement. The preference should be in the redevelopment agreement because that's, that's allowing them to go forward. So that should be. That's. So that should be in the. That's another term that should be in the redevelopment agreement. My only. My only. So we, I discussed that. Um, with when when uh, I previously had this conversation with your prior borough right. attorney, um, because it's in our administrative, Mike, it's it's in the administrative plan, and that's really that's where our commitment comes from. Um, if you want it in an agreement, I think it may I think it may be better in the pilot in the financial agreement than in the RDA, because as 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 we know, the RDA basically evaporates once the building is is built. Um, I mean, we can make something, I guess, continue beyond the RDA, but generally the RDA is considered to be probably well, covered in both. Doesn't yeah, matter. Yeah, man, it's, it's, Just refer yeah. to it in both, and we're yeah. covered. It has to be something. But I mean, the, 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 real, the real claw would be in the financial agreement because then if, the, if that condition is not kept, then the terms of the financial agreement evaporate. Uh, and so therefore it's subject to 
uh, regular taxation. taxation. Well, I can tell you that that was one of the starters on this deal, just so the whole board understands that. That, that was what attracted us to this. Mm -hmm. So that is an important part of this. Yes. And the other part of it is we understand what they're suggesting in our administration, <coughs> understanding that this is not your typical redevelopment. So we did give them a little less of a pilot agreement, which we'll talk about later. That's not going to be talking about now. Yeah. But it's not going to be your normal 10%. You, you want our school age kids. Well, and I can have school age kids. <laughs> <laughs> um, so it, this is a little, it's, as we've seen right from the beginning, it's a hybrid kind of weird project that involves a lot of different steps. But I just want to make sure we cover our bases as the town. And I don't know if that comes from your board, from my attorney, or from wherever. Yes, sure Pro probably from everybody. Yeah. Okay. So is this fulfill our COA responsibilities? Unfortunately, we filled our COA responsibilities already with senior housing, but but everyone, I didn't want to mention it in the last group, you know, COA is just about to die. It's, it's not well, let's, let's see what happens. There's right. new legislation. Right. So yes. there might be uh, increased yeah, numbers update. associated with right. the senior yeah. housing and everything like that. So yeah. we, can, we, we can't say what the next round is going to bring at this point. Right. Exactly. It'll bring something. <laughs> yeah. So if I am done addressing the board, then yep. I will resume my seat on the <laughs> Thank you. I appreciate it. <laughs> well, this is not quite as exciting as the last project, but it is necessary. Um, this is the site of buildings are demolished now, state county. It's like, uh, Looks better already. Sorry. <laughs> Looks better already. Uh, we did a new facility on Route 23. The county consolidated all their DPWs, including Pennsylvania Avenue and other areas of the county. And this was part of that. Uh, consolidated into that building on 23 behind all of the retail labels. Oh. Um, so what we are going to achieve here is this site really goes beyond our property. I say what Bill is, is calling our property uh, all the way up to where the car wash is and beyond and the county is now separating that. They're going to be building a salt dome. Uh, they're going to be building an area to bring plows and support for not only up the lakes but up county. Uh, and that uh, transfer station and recycling station will be kept and improved for the use of the residents of Buffalo Lakes. So when we looked at the site, there were some constraints. That's what the building is going to look like. It's quite a difference from the HUD 202s. HUD 202s are architecture are like poison because they tell you what window you're going to put in, they tell you the type of brick, they tell you how high, and those are five story buildings. They tell you how many units you're going to provide and how many parking spaces. That's the end. So there's not a lot of creativity here, but it's served the niche. Uh, I dare say, and Bill can correct me, the day this is advertised, it's going to be full. There's such a demand for this type of housing. And it's, it's residents that want to stay in the community. They don't want to move away. Mm -hmm. And it provides the affordability of it. So it's, it's a great problem. Um, part of what we have to do, which we're in the process of doing now, and that's why this is time critical, as Bill said, is that we have to secure the funding for it. And that's why it's time sensitive. Uh, we also have to get through the DEP. So what you see out there now, which is a really barren looking, horrible environment, is gonna be greened considerably. There's a 50 foot buffer that we have to now maintain that we went to DEP and already determined. We're gonna plant it, it's gonna be green. It's gonna provide space for the residents of this building to use. And not just that, all residents of Palm Beach, excuse me, it's open. Um, we provided 85 parking spaces. We're proposing 65 units, which we felt is a maximized density. Um, Ms. Lowler has been very helpful during this process, communicating with Janice and John and, and people inside. Uh, and that would provide us with 65, 64 one bedroom units and one two-bedroom unit, which is for the caretaker. It's pretty much the, the formula of these buildings. Um, that person's on site all the time and is also integral in the building manager. So they live in there. Um, we followed the redevelopment plan to the T, not asking for any relief from it. Well, the setbacks are as described. The height, as I just heard from the last application, is commensurate <laughs> with <laughs> I want you to know that we're not asking for you. Are you willing to say I'm camping here? Don't say I'm camping here. No, we have to do it. It's a little bit more austere. Um, and there will be um, additional space here because you have an EV plant in your ready to redevelopment. 
uh, agreement and that we are sensitive to. Uh, obviously, it's going to be a level two. We're not doing a level three here. Uh, I would like to see a level three, but I, I don't think the finances uh, would allow it. You'd have to go out and get a third party like Electrify America. I have an electric car, although I use it all the time. That's right. So you're going to get the four spaces up front, which is part of the ordinance, the first part of the 15%, and then we can add on to them as we go. Um, it's a, it's a, an increased embellishment of that property. Uh, and the county really took uh, a great position in getting it to the state county housing authority. And they've latched on to this now. I think it's a great, great addition to the town. Um, this improvement will happen on Ivy Street, for what as part of our property, so sidewalks and uh, plantings and so on. It's also going to happen on Ringwood Ave. Is that locust? We can't do anything about that industrial building in the corner, but eventually locust. that might go in a different direction at some point. Uh, so all is those are locusts. Right? I think it's locusts. It's nice. Your ordinance. It's Ivy is one of them. It's uh, very confusing. Basically, I think there's it's, the it's one. It's speaks for itself. It's going to be a, a great, uh, great addition to the town. And it provides a need. Like I said, uh, uh, you, you won't get two weeks in this. Up here. This thing will be full. That's right. That's cool. Does he have any questions yeah. of me? I'd like to answer them for you. We're, we're, the two of us are confused on Locust and Ivy Street. Yeah, I think that might be Locust that you've labeled as Ivy. Um, well, so what happened was there's a paper street here. Ah. So there's a paper right. street here that was vacated. Uh, I think Debbie's. Uh, yeah, so careful for the yes, vacated. Yeah. So um, what they did was the county gave a, a piece to which is going to be part of the recycling center okay. and the salt dome and you know the area for services and the rest of it came here so that was uh, no i'm talking about what you've actually labeled as ivy street below oh, oh the, well, that's yeah, actually locust that's probably that's what yeah that probably was the, the piece of paper that goes across right yes you're correct no there will be a uh, no, no, no. engineer i don't think that addresses his question he's saying this is wrong here that is yes, actually locust right, street yeah. oh, okay um, but that probably came from that. Uh, okay, that makes sense. So Why everybody should understand too. I guess I get not aware of everything. So initially, they were tearing down the salt dome completely and moving it down to, to Route 23. So we asked them while they were in the process of doing this if they would keep the salt dome here, it would help them because it would take care of North County, West Melbourne, if we wanted to. And at the same time, we had no place to keep our salt. So we're going to be able to keep our salt again in the same salt dome that they're going to build. And we can go in and out, and there's going to be parking, I understand, for some trucks yes. and some things. And we're also going to get an entrance in and out of the recycling center that the uh, attorney was just talking about. It hasn't been drawn up yet. Right now, as we all know, there's one in, one out, same road. Mm -hmm. Now there'll be a one way in, one way out. That'll all be part of this project. Also. Correct. What about the cell tower? Is that going to be on the property? Yeah. 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 What's the orientation on that? I, I can't tell. Where's Ring Road Avenue? Ring Road Avenue here. Oh, I'm well. Okay. Yeah. Right, so the car is across the street. That's so it's going to sit on the back for a while. For yeah, the we're just, you're right. That's right, because the pedestrian right. traffic was better back there. I mean, obviously, the train runs from time to time. I've been there as it goes by. It's not a lot, but it is a fact that it's not going to go away. Um, the improvement to what's there is that all of this green space, which mm -hmm. is part of what the DP is demanding us to put in, uh, is going to benefit the building. Um, so, yeah, the setback was. Our choice. That's something we've brought. Where's the entrance and uh, exit to the parking lot? So you'll have one over Ringwood Ave, and you'll have one over Locust. It's going to be the existing. And then also the DPW, when the county is designing that part of it, Bill and I are just giving whatever they need. Uh, there will be a salt dome, as the mayor just represented. There will be additional parking there for vehicles, probably snow plows for the winter. And then the recycling center will still remain. Um, just on an aside for that, which I know you're not involved with, they're going to make that look as nice as they can make a salt dome look. I mean, it's <laughs> just not going to be a, a dump well, for the county. You'll get a chance to look at that. Just, I, I, I'm speaking with them, that's not going to be a dome anymore. Um, it's going to be like a well, like we did, we, I did the one on 23. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. Rectangular building. Yeah, yeah that's the new style yeah. now. Okay. Okay. Salt dome is... Yeah. It was a cliche, but it doesn't really work. It's but it's just not going to turn into be a county like oh, resting place for old trucks. You get a chance stuff. to look at it and, and make a determination. Okay. I'm not involved in it, so I can't <laughs> tell you, but I'm okay. sure that Matt and, and the commissioners will be receptive to what you're looking for there. Um, there's a large piece of property up front we're not touching. Mm -hmm. This is an area that will probably be a retention area. So Boswell Engineering is designing the site for the engineered site plan. 
Uh, we're working with them. That's how we know all of this stuff is going to happen because it's already down to DP and looking for, again, in a timely fashion, getting an approval so they can get a DP fund. <laughs> <laughs> That's an oxymoron. Oh, I know. Um, they did make considerable progress already. Um, so, so, sorry, this is the stormwater, uh, sir. Yeah, so there's a complication here because this is uphill. You know, water flows downhill. So, <laughs> damn we're gravity. We're going to give them the opportunity to, make it work to the other way. some of the retention area that we have to accommodate that water that's coming down from the uphill side. So it's a, it's a good marriage. You've got cooperation between the two. So, uh, so yeah, I think it's a win-win for the town, but it's, these projects, we do them all the time. Like I said, it'll be full before you get it in the bank. I think it'll be great. What, what, what's the age restriction on these units? Is it 55, 55 and older? 55 and older, yeah. okay. Um, just curious, because, um, you know, obviously the locust site is is there I guess is there sidewalks pedestrian access off site onto Locust that would enable me to walk to um, Axton's uh, Thatcher McGee's the the shopping plaza we're going across the to street. Improve Locust. Okay. And we're going to improve Ringwood mm -hmm. to the bounds of our property. To the bounds of your property. I'd like to have taken. But from the building itself, there's, I'm assuming that the, then there's going to be some kind of sidewalk infrastructure to, yeah. oh, okay. to onto, okay. We're not. Well, no, I'm just talking to offsite. I, I understand that there's sort of like the recreational paths. Yes, up to the bridge. Up to the bridge. Right, but from the yeah. building itself you walk to the, the front exit, door of the building, how do you get to a side? Right, how do I walk street? to? We'll walk to around it. Okay, but how do I get offsite walking offsite? We'll provide paths. We're not doing that right now because of the DP. I'm not touching that buffer zone. So there's ample area here to build sidewalks in here, and ample area here, which we are. We're building this now. Okay, but from the building, there's some kind of sidewalk infrastructure that gets me to that sidewalk on Lucas Street. Yes, that sidewalk is there. Right? That's what that is. That okay. Easy. This I'm just seeing a lot of like black and white lines on the map, so I, I don't know what's Well, you're going to get an engineered site plan from okay. Oswell that's going to be more specific. Sure. That's, that, I, was, I, I don't mean to hop in just on the timing. When will that be? Uh, it's done. Okay. It's yes, done. That's, okay. I didn't they mean to interrupt. Need, and Bill will tell you, that's, they need the timing on this to get this funding to go forward is I time sensitive. That's, that's why right. right. no, That was me, Andy. I, I, I didn't know it was done. I was told, I was told it was going to be a little while, but yeah. okay, good. Right. Yes. I think that's typically what this board likes to say. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yes, we do. As well as that. Does that meet our requirement of parking once the parking? Yes. Yeah, so we need, okay. for the 65 units, we need 80 spaces. We have five additional. Okay. And we could have put more in there, but we chose to keep more green spaces. Yeah. Whoa, whoa, whoa. whoa. That, that, that was too fast. 65 units times 1.5 is not 80. No, 65 units is 1.25. Right now, 1.5 is what we need. I think, no, the plan because I think it, because it was all senior and their one bedrooms, yeah. I think it was less. Yes. We yeah. the the right. Right. It was I, the first time we're yeah, seeing yeah, it. Yeah, What's in the redevelopment you, plan? You uh, saw the redevelopment well, plan. Exactly what it is. Well, the redevelopment plan. Oh, the. We, yeah, they're following oh, the redevelopment plan. Seven, your redevelopment plan. Oh. <laughs> senior housing may be different. She's maybe different. Right yeah, I don't know that. Right. Or two people. Well, the HUD requirement is 75 units and 50 spaces. Now, that's then. This is now. But both of those projects in town follow that regulation. Our experience is that one per unit is more than enough. And you have some visitor spaces. That's what you have. But I believe that we follow the ordinance. No, you definitely, you definitely, at least when I talked to your office, yeah, that was definitely in there. Yeah. I'm trying to, I'm trying to find it right now. I'm the only reason I bring it up is that it's a good point. It, it will comply with the plan. Add more parking towards senior housing um, for the same reason. You know, more people are driving longer now, and and uh, you know, back in the day, yeah, one was enough. But it wasn't enough. Now we had actually had more spots. Well, I thought it was 1.25. Yeah. So that was thought it was 1.25 as well. 1.5. No, the plan. No, the plan was. I thought the plan was 1.25. The plan is in accordance right. yeah. with the 
existing code for parking. Code for who? Code for pump and lakes for parking. For, is that a separate number from? I've never heard that. Yeah, All these years, I've never heard that. We have a parking that. code. Yeah, we have a parking section of the regular. No, no, I understand, but all the projects we've done up to date have been 1.5. Yeah, unusual for senior housing. Unusual. For senior. Okay, but Deb, are you saying that it's 1.5? I'll have to look it up. Okay. I'll have to look it up. But okay. I, I was pretty sure that that's what we were going with. What number? At the 1.5. What point five? Point five. Point five. It says that it's in accordance with our code, so I just need to look it up in the code. Got to okay. find that in the code. Yep. Got it. Okay. I'm, I'm, okay. That's the reference. Got it. I will also research. We can still make changes. In my mind, there's enough parking here for a senior project. And I'd rather maintain the green space to put a more asphalt out there. Um, but then you have to go back to the DEP and it'll be another four years. Yeah, please. Yeah. No, we don't want to do that. And there was talk of having an office and a meeting space in there? Yes, it's, yes, it's there. There's a meeting space, there's an office. On each floor, there's uh, small group areas where the residents can gather on each floor. Mm. Um, there's storage units in here. Um, yes, we have all of that. And uh, the county has uh, taken on a, uh, a consultant. His name is Doug Struck. He's going to run this. He runs Sienna Village. He's got a high experience in all of this senior housing. Uh, they, the day to day is run by them. So it's a, it's a real, it's, you, you it's a real a, thing. A bunch of uh, staff in Wyckoff, I think. And he, yes, he yeah. Christian Holm, yeah. He's right. Right. Oh. Sienna Village is the one across from Wayne Township. Uh, that used to be the Anthony Wayne High School. So when, when do you start? When when does it start? Um, if you tell us about tomorrow, we'll go. <laughs> yeah, yeah. We need to get the money first, and that's why Bill's right. And right. then also, what, what's the square footage on the um, the units? Oh, each unit is 650 square feet for one bed. Okay. Yeah, 650. Okay. Uh, there was talk of a multi-purpose meeting room on the bottom floor that that we could use. If yeah, it would be for our senior groups. Also. Yes, Mayor, that's it here. Okay. Cool. Yeah, that would be open for anyone's use. Residents sometimes go there, they bring their families there. Uh, I mean, most of these people are ambulatory. This is not, you know, this is not senior citizens. These are not nursing homes. This is senior housing. Mm -hmm. So, I, and I'm sure everybody's aware of our senior housing now that we have has a three year waiting list on it wow. right now for it. So and that's why it was pretty important to make it confident only because I think a lot of those people will jump over. I'm getting calls already in my office. How do I get on the list? And how, by the right way, how does that happen? Well, well don't ask me that. I'm not <laughs> 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 no, but when so we did go to Lakeshore, correct, Mayor, even there, which was that was a HUD 202 Section 8, was, the waiting list was gone. There's no waiting list. Uh, so, but, uh, yes, what's the section? I have somebody that calls me every single, maybe every two weeks, and inquires if they're ready. He, he's in Florida, he was from Compton, and he wants to move back. Yeah, this is a... My I mean, it's it's just anecdotal, but my understanding from, from the executive director is that they, ex you talked about the North Country, that the expectation is we're never going to get, there's going to be a list of just pump and like right. there's a lot. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that sure we'll true. never get off that list. And by the way, I don't want to make it seem the reason we said North County is because South County, and I want to say the South County have their own uh, senior housing within those towns. So they're using doing the same thing we're doing. Their residents are going to their senior house. Right. So they're essentially the same house. When you say North County, Wanakie, anything north of us, Wanakie, Bloomingdale, okay. Ringwood, that's Milford. Gotcha. Okay. Anything else? Yeah, for us? That was excellent. Yeah, it's a great improvement, obviously, yep. for what's there. So yeah. uh, it's almost enjoyable. So <laughs> I'll just say something. I'm going to find them to get those. Hard right, to say with a lawyer in the room, right? One second. <laughs> one second. <laughs> what, what do we need to wrap up here? I don't know about today, but for timing, if they could get all those plans to Deb and for people to look at well before next month's meeting. I can work with the management and also have everybody will have the draft agreement that if essentially the way you've done it before, if you're happy with what you see and exactly what it's going to look like, all those things, they are, you know, the big attachment. The other terms I said are largely in place for the for the okay. agreement. Um, I, so I would suggest getting those things to just uh, yeah, to Devin and to Ben as fast as possible. What, what else? I mean, just tell me what else. What, I mean, the engineered site plan I heard. 
Anything else? Typically, would, would go to the to the planning board, and uh, and the outside, and, you know, the el what elevation. it's going to look elevations. Okay. So they can see what it looks like, and then the well, limits of everything. I mean, it's it's. I, Steve, what's what, what's my that? office is just text me according to your ordinance. It's one per unit, senior four lots, for your zoning ordinance. So we're providing one point for all of us. <laughs> well, I'm senior, but that doesn't mean we have to follow your board. Right. Well, they, they have more than that now. Yeah, we have more, yeah. Okay. So that's what we're going to do. Everybody, let's get back on track. Here. So I, sh I should plan on almost as if I'm making a Yes, that's what you should plan on. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yep, that's it. Oh, yeah. that should, they, they should get it and look at it. I don't think you have to go through it. They, they're going to, well, they decide what they want. That's typical. So you present yeah. all those things, you get to ask all those questions, you get to go through it and make okay. sure that it looks right. good. I mean, there'll be testimony. Any expert you want to bring, you know, tag them along. You, uh, if that's you want, uh, if that's what I'm, I'm trying yes. to. Yes. Sorry. Yes. You submit, you don't the, know. submit the application, like the application um, data. You know that would go with the site plan, so that we have that. For okay. Review. And submitted to um, Carmelina Pissarro is the um, is the secretary of the board. Okay. So submitted to her, and then it would get distributed to everyone. Okay. The planning board, uh, correct? No, 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 she's no, she's no, 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 but we're, we're submitting, yeah, there would be a planning board application ultimately. That's not what we're making. No, it's we're a redevelopment hoping. application also. You want an no, no. Application? Yes. yes. All right. You yes. haven't submitted an application to this, right? No. Right. No. No, that's, I, yeah, no, I, I understand. I'm making an application to you first, yeah. but I'm doing it as if I were making yes. this planning board. Yes, but we have a separate application form. Got it. Form. Yeah. You okay. have your own form. Okay. Yeah. Yes. Okay. It's, yeah. it's pretty simple. And you'll get me comments on the agreement. Wait, you don't? Oh, yeah, absolutely. Yes. Okay. You don't have the application. Is the form to fill out? No. I, um, I'll send it to you. Yeah, send it to I, yeah. I'm yeah. Try, I'm, now I'm drawing a blank. I think so, for some reason, I think I may, we have, may have done that a long time ago. I'll, I'll send uh, you. But whatever, yes. Yeah, yeah, if you could, that, that I'd appreciate. Thank you. Then we're all the same. The site plan yeah. is complete. I'll give and Debbie that, copies of it now just to look at, and that is complete. Okay. Screw check. I think it was the other one. Got, Got the escrow in. check. I know. I know. I wasn't going to get to open my mouth until I delivered the, right. until I delivered the check. <laughs> well, that's what I forgot to ask you, Liz. You got you got the mask and gold, correct? Yeah, Stay down. <laughs> Not only are we the redevelopment agency, we're the collection agency. <laughs> okay. Uh, cool. And, and that means the door with the gun. I said okay. Yeah. Okay. Oh, did I think this public has a question? Well, I didn't oh, get there. Sorry. Yet. Oh. I did. Okay. It's really hard between, yeah, I was. between you I'm and sorry. Baskin. I don't know who runs this meeting. <laughs> okay. Thank you for the presentation. It was a, it's a really great project. Mm -hmm. Good for Pompton Lakes. Mm -hmm. Absolutely good for Pompton Lakes. Okay. So that takes care of new and unfinished business. We don't have an executive session tonight. And now we'll do public discussion. Thank you. Name and My name is John Gray. And my daughter and her family, they live in Pompton. Um, she lives on Colfax, and my grandson goes to Lennox, right here. I presently don't live in Pompton Lakes. I live in Sussex County in Hamburg, but I would like to live in Pompton Lakes. Um, <laughs> and I, I don't know really how to go about it. I'd be interested in this. I'm a senior. I'd be interested in senior housing or affordable housing. And I just would like to ask. Um, I can do this. Can I be put on a list? Can I fill out an application? Um, I, I, that's not a question for this board. No. Um, <laughs> but the mayor may be able to help you. Yeah. This, when the housing authorities are going to borrow, we're just going to build this. They will be making their own lists and copies. And then they are not up to that stage yet. As soon as we get that information to us publicly, we will make it public or our website or social media. And, and, and then I would do it as soon as you see that. that but page, but right now, I would call but isn't, isn't there a but there? Wouldn't the but be she has to live in Pompton Lake? I don't know. I'm not answering any of that. I don't know. And my daughter. I don't know. I don't know the restrictions. Yes. Yes. I don't know the restrictions. Or moving with your daughter. Yeah. <laughs> a resident. So, a resident. <laughs> when she first came, I met her. Change your address. Oh. Oh, Meridia is easy. Call them. Yeah. Call them. Call them.
Call Meridian Development. They're in Linden, and ask them about how they're going about leasing that building. Okay. So this is also senior what? Lakeside residents. Yeah. <laughs> I'm sorry. Thank you. Uh, I'm you no, I think it's just like Lakeside residents. Yeah. So what point did you lose? Yeah. Okay. Let's get back on track. <laughs> There will be affordable housing in Meridian. What you need to do to apply for that, we wouldn't know. But again, that's something to talk to them about. Okay. Try, 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 try. Yeah. try. And, and Eric also mentioned uh, you might want to find out who's the managing agent is at Lakeside Commons because they have affordable housing also. So we had a department uh, company called Triad, and you can contact the clerk here tomorrow, and they handle all, all our uh, affordable housing. Okay, and then you can get on the list with that. Excellent. Thank you. Thank okay. you so much. Thank you. You're welcome. You're welcome. Anyone else from the public? Close the public session. Any comments from us? I, I'd like to know how everybody feels about this part, just so I know. Which, which one? The one that was awesome. Oh, that's great. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. No one had any great idea. Yeah. Great idea. Incredible, incredible yeah. improvement. My only, concern, my only concern would be uh, ambulance squad. Additional load on them yeah, with us sure. with the building. Yeah. So I know that they they go to a lot of calls at the senior housing. Yeah. That's a good point. Yep. No question. We can ask them that when they come next month. Oh, they they will be. Well, they have, they're going to do an application yeah. to us. We're going oh, to, I thought you not the end. I thought you not the end. But it may be something to ask them. So, so that's where the confusion was. This wasn't an application for them. What was this a conception? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I guess pretty much. Yeah. Green conceptual layout. <laughs> pretty much. Okay. That wasn't the original. We have a motion to adjourn. Mm -hmm. Something Thank you all. Oh wait a minute. Wait, one thing. This is you can turn this off for this. Debbie, you should tell people what you wrote to me. Oh.